the most impressive examples of augmented reality last year during the peak of coronavirus. London doctors adopted high-tech headsets to treat patients remotely. The sophisticated technology helped to reduce the need for bedside visits, enhance communication, while also reducing the need for personal protective equipment for healthcare workers. But these kind of jaw-dropping advancements go far beyond the medical world, with augmented reality set to rev revolutionise how we learn, work and interact. So for more, we welcome futurist and author Michael McQueen. Hi, Michael. Good morning. Okay, we're going to start with the term augmented reality. Yep. Not everyone's kind of familiar. How's augmented reality different from virtual reality? Yeah, people often use the terms sort of you know, interchangeably, yeah. but they're quite different. So virtual reality is where you replace what you see. So putting on a headset, for instance, to see a completely different reality. Augmented is where something gets overlaid over what you're seeing. So if you remember Pokemon Go, yes. that was when we first started coming to getting a sense of how big this was as a trend. That was augmented reality. So overlaying images or text over what you're seeing. Mm. Okay. So you say surgeries are being performed remotely. Yeah. Now, logistically, how does this even work? You're in one part of the world, your doctor's in the other part of the yeah. world. How does it work? How's the scalpel getting to me? Robots. So it's pretty incredible. So robotic surgery, if you look at, say, prostate surgeries, like 82% of them are being done with robots already. But what this is doing is pairing up augmented or virtual reality with robotic surgery. So Imperial College in London, May last year, peak of COVID, they actually had surgeries done where the surgeon was standing at a distance from the patient with a virtual reality set, headset on and the robot was doing the actual surgery. So you think about what this means for like people who are needing surgery in regional or remote areas, you could be operated on someone in a capital city. Like it starts to really change how healthcare will operate over the next few years. I hope it's it cool. get mixed up with Barney the cocktail robot. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be shaken, not stirred. Oh, <laughs> but you have, you still have to get to it. Uh, obviously, um, you have to get to the theatre and everything. Correct. Yeah, you're not just be... sitting in your car, <laughs> <laughs> reading a UBD. Yeah, yeah. Elon sure. Musk is connecting our people's brains yeah. to computer. Uh, it, this is like the monkey. We saw the monkey shots. Take us through this. It's pretty freaky stuff, isn't yeah. it? So like, it's if he wasn't busy enough making like electric cars that drive mm -hmm. themselves and rockets and the rest. Um, so Neuralink is one of his many companies. And Neuralink's, the goal is they're actually producing technology that monitors your neural activity. So the example of the monkey is that actually monitored its brain. And instead of using the monkey's hands to move that in the game of Pong, it actually monitored the part of the brain that would move a limb. And that was actually what moved the piece on the screen. And what, so, what's he doing with his mouth? His mouth. That is how he's being rewarded for playing the game. He's getting actually, a, I can think it's a yoga or a smoothie type drink. Yeah. Oh. But what's cool about Neuralink is they want to use this for people who are paralysed to be able to communicate or to connect with computers by just using their brains. And so, it's some pretty cool stuff happening in that area. Kylie's been trying to train a monkey for 13 years. <laughs> it's just going quite well. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and he still puts <laughs> his hands out. Trains with yogurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, well. The U.S. Army just last week signed this massive mm. um, 29 billion dollar deal with Microsoft to supply the US Army combat troops with these augmented headsets. So this is uh, this is getting very real very quickly. Yeah, it's a bit controversial. A whole lot of Microsoft staff actually tried to block this and, and had a bit of a protest saying this would turn the battlefield into almost like a video game. Right. What it's doing is like a really souped up version of a night goggles headset. So if you're going to uncertain environments, it actually overlays information to make it a lot safer. Mm. Um, but it's really, really cool when it comes to training. So a lot of, um, a lot of emergency services personnel are using virtual reality for training now because yes. it gives them a much, much better sense of the environments they'll go into. It's much more effective and more cost effective as well. Mm -hmm. So if ever there was a recruitment problem, doing more of that, yeah, I tell you what, you'd I be inundated, so. wouldn't you? Correct. Facebook are uh, working on the first pair of smart Ray-Bans. Yeah. They always are quite smart, a Ray-Ban, when really he dresses <laughs> up an outfit, but these are super smart. <laughs> And what? 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 <laughs> Sorry, can I just... Well, Ray-Bans are quite smart, right? They dress up well, an Biden outfit. Or Biden wears them. Yes, they can't, do, right. they can't do prostate surgery. <laughs> <though. They laughs> cool. But these are super smart, Ray-Bans. They are super mm. smart. So, um, so, so they look really cool. They're <laughs> extremely cool. But do, like, do you remember the Google Glass things, those awkward-looking glasses? Yeah, that and never they took never off. took off. Yeah. So these will be a cool version of that. So these are smart glasses that will overlay what you're seeing. So let's say walking down the street, you look at a cafe or restaurant, it'll overlay, let's say, reviews or special prices or menu items for what you're viewing. So to give you a sense of how massive Facebook thinks this will be, 20% of their global headcount staff-wise are focused on augmented reality or virtual reality right now. It's huge. Wow. Um, Google Maps will soon have an indoor navigation feature. Is this for the husband who comes home drunk and needs to get around the house without waking up the wife? It could well be for What's that. What's an indoor navigation feature? So the idea is that like it's augmented reality is direct you around areas you've not been to before. So the example I saw trialed of this was at Houston Airport where it directed you around the terminal by holding your phone up and giving you step-by-step -step directions. Oh, wow, that's okay. good. Or if I'm in an department store, it gets me to the 
specials. To the handbag Indeed, section. Indeed, it would. Oh, like, like you couldn't get there with your eyes closed anyway. <laughs> uh, always good to see you. Mum's Likewise. birthday today. You're going out for a nice lunch. Indeed we, we, we are. We see in your future that you're paying for that lunch, <laughs> just by the way. Very perceptive. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. For more insight into future trends and predictions, you can check out Michael's new book. It's called The New Now and it is out now.